Welcome! In this video I would like to investigate another property of the ordinary least squares estimator and especially investigate the influence on which and how much data we are utilizing to calculate the ordinary least squares solution. And we start this video with just recapping the variance calculation from the last video where we have basically seen that the variance of the ordinary least squares estimator is depending on the noise variance and on the data which I collect here in the regressor matrices. In order to investigate the impact of the amount of data, I can rewrite this equation without manipulating it by adding here a sigma square over n, so n would be the number of data samples, and I correct this um, division by n by adding 1 over n into this parenthesis term, because as I calculate the inverse of 1 over n, this is basically inverted and will compensate for this 1 over n in front of the parenthesis, and therefore I didn't manipulate the equation. And I would like to investigate the impact of uh, taking many measurements. So take many measurements, or formally we are looking for the edge case where n takes very big numbers or in the um, most significant way even goes to infinity of sigma square divided by n times 1 over n z transpose times z inverse. Okay, if we look at this expression here, so the part within the parenthesis, we can actually decompose that. An equivalent representation would be 1 over n times the sum of k equals 1 to n of z k times z transpose of k. Here z k is basically a, a row vector, right? So that would be one uh, vector out of our um, regressor matrix and this would be a column vector also from our regressor matrix. And what we do here basically by this multiplication of z times z transpose, what we build, basically build up is a n times n matrix, right? So not n, um, n times n. Oh no, sorry, that's not correct. It's not n times n, it's q, q times q because we have up to q unknowns. So that is q times q actually. And this is basically then just adding together all of these q times q matrices and dividing them by n for n times. So that basically means that is something like an average calculation, right? So we calculate the average of this um, decomposition of z, z uh, transpose. And in other words, what we could also prove formally, that means that this expression here is bounded, right? So that is a bounded expression which will not grow with n, it will be bounded like something like the average of this data matrix. So since this is a bounded, a bounded expression or a bounded matrix, we can normally also calculate the inverse. And that means that the variance of W hat will be sigma square divided by n times some constant matrix, I'm just putting it here into like a sloppy notation, which depends on um, 
the regressor vectors. And as this grows infinitely, of course, 1 over n times this constant matrix will basically lead to the case where this matrix is divided by very large 1 over n's, and that basically means we get a zero matrix with q times q elements. So what is the practical derivation from that? The practical derivation is that we have a consistent estimator because the uncertainty, so the variance of w hat, decreases with 1 over n and becomes eventually a zero variance matrix when n grows infinity large. This is in part an observation which we have already done before because we have seen that in expectation, which is basically practically taking infinitely many measurements, that the all S estimator is a bias-free estimator, which is identical to that the variance of the estimate, of the parameter estimates, become zero. So this is a consistent estimator. If we also combine all these properties of the ordinary least squares estimator which we have found together, we will also find, or we can also summarize, that the OLS is a so-called blue estimator. And what means blue? Blue means the best linear unbiased estimator. So best in that sense that we have a consistent estimate with the minimal possible variance, which we had discussed in the previous lecture video. Linear is, of course, because our model, which we identify as the linear model. Unbiased, we have discussed in expectation, we are able to find the true parameters and estimator because we are estimating, we are identifying here the parameters. So therefore, the ordinary least squares estimator is a blue estimator, best linear, unbiased estimator, if these assumptions for this identification problem applies, right? So these assumptions which we apply were central in order to do all these calculations. This finding that the variance of the parameter estimate decreases with 1 over n, I would like to also look more into details using another numerical example. And for this numerical example, we take again our car velocity model. So where we want to find uh, the parameters of a car model, which represent the V power curve. So the power over the velocity curve, and we want to identify the physical parameters of the car model, which describe this relationship, which was a polynomial relationship up to order three. What we do in this numerical example is we again set up our parameters here, which are the same parameters as in one of the previous examples. And then we perform multiple ordinary least squares fits. And with multiple, I mean that we will redo this for many different numbers of uh, data points. So this is this 10 to the power of i. So that means we will utilize 10 data points, 100 data points, 1000 data points, and so on. And for every number of data points, we will do it 100 times in order to get like an estimate on how much the spread, how much the variance of a certain configuration of those ordinary least squares is when it comes to a certain number of data points, capital N. What you then also calculate here is the error between the true parameter vector and the estimated parameter vector, which we can of course do in this numerical example because we have access to the true parameters and we can utilize this information to get an idea how uncertain our uh, calculation is. What we then do is we visualize these uh, results in box plots. Here we can see it for the alpha parameter, which is the parameter which has a, a linear dependency on our model. And here on the uh, x-axis, we basically see the number of data points which we consider, which could be like 10, 100, 000, and so on. 
And here on the y-axis, we see the relative parameter error for these 100 trials per uh, data number setup. And what we can see from these box plots is pretty much this 1 over n um, dependency. So with the number of uh, data points considered, the uncertainty, which can be represented by the box plot, is reduced drastically. And here in expectation, we can see that the box is becoming even so small that we have a near to perfect uh, estimate very, with a very low variance. We can also have a look at the other uh, parameters. And here, for example, for the beta parameter, which is the parameter which um, represents the um, quadratic term of the velocity here in this power curve, we can see that the qualitative um, dependency is also the same. The only difference is now that it seems that the parameter beta is more sensitive because uh, the relative error, which we uh, show here on the y-axis, seems to be greater than for the alpha parameter. Last but not least, we can also show that for the gamma parameter, which is a term which uh, represents the cubic impact of speed or velocity versus power, and this seems to have the least sensitive uh, impact because the error range here is the lowest under all three parameters. In this investigation, we have just considered the number of parameters utilizing a normal distribution, uh, or not a normal distribution, but an equally distribution between zero speed and some speed Vmax, which was, I think, 200 kilometers an hour. And in this range of speeds, we have just equally distributed our data points in order to come up with these results. However, we can also see that we might have another impact and that impact can come here from the data distribution. And in a second experiment, which I would like to go now through with you, we have distributed these points in different ranges. So that we say, okay, let's take a certain amount of data points and put them only in the first 20% of the speed range, put them only in the first 40% of the speed range, and so on. So basically, we took the same amount of data, but distributed it more broadly or more closely to a certain range. Um, so pretty much the same experiment as before, but now we fixed n, right? So herefore, we fixed n, n is constant, and we just distributed the amount of data points among the speed range. If we do that and utilize 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100% of the data points for a fixed amount of data, we can also see that this seems to have a significant impact on the variance. It seems here to be saturating at some point. But this is basically this impact of Z transpose Z inverse that if we put all of these data points in a very close area of the speed uh, range, then this seems to have less information as taking the same amount of speed measurement points and distributing them over a larger area and therefore trying to excite the system, get information from the system in different speed areas, right? So this seems to help also to reduce the uncertainty beyond just adding more and more data points to the uh, estimation problem. Therefore, th this investigation and the theoretical calculations highlight that two things have to come together if we want to perform a successful identification. The one is that we should have enough data, and obviously the more the better if these, uh, if these assumptions apply. Secondly, we also need to choose our data wisely. So we are uh, motivated to distribute the data samples in a broad range, in an intelligent range, and try not to lump, to concentrate all measurements into just a small area of the operating range here of our car in order to get a more certain, a more accurate uh, estimate. 
We will also consider the data distribution question in further follow-up videos. However, with this video, we are ending the theoretical investigations on the ordinary least uh, squares estimator, which is the best linear unbiased estimator we can find under these assumptions. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video.